In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the biggest mistakes that people make at their restraining order hearings, and this applies whether or not you have an attorney. My name is Veronica. I'm a restraining order defense attorney here in California, and I help people put their cases behind them so that they can enjoy their lives and their freedom. I'm also the creator of a course called Defeat the DVRO in which I teach you everything you need to know to win your restraining order hearing. So if that is something you're interested in, you can get your free first class via the link down below. So let's jump right in. The biggest mistake that people make in these restraining order hearings when they are preparing, when they are thinking about what they want to present to the judge and in the hearings themselves is the kitchen sink approach especially in the context of domestic violence restraining orders, there are probably a lot of communications between you and the other person. And by communications, I mean text messages, call logs, emails. There are probably photos too. In this day and age, there's a lot of material. And a lot of people, you know, you're kind of overwhelmed. You kind of think, hey, if a judge looked at my whole situation, if they reviewed everything that I have, then they would side in my favor, or they would at least be more likely to side in my favor. It would be good for me if they did that. I feel too scared and too anxious to eliminate anything, so I'm just going to give it all to the judge. I'm gonna bring it all to my hearing and show everything. Okay, the judge is not going to look at all that, for sure not. And it's a big mistake to try to bring all this to the restraining order hearing, either through your attorney or on your own, because the judge will not look at it. And what happens when you have a large volume of evidence that you want to provide to the judge, and you try to, for example, read every single text message between you and the other party, when you try to show the judge every single social media post, when you're playing all these videos, the problem is that at a certain point, the judge is going to cut you off. And what happens if you didn't get to the important stuff? You're never going to be able to show it and the judge won't consider it. So you don't wanna take the kitchen sink approach, but then what do you do instead? First of all, you wanna make sure that whatever evidence you are presenting is relevant. Something relevant in the context of a domestic violence restraining order, something showing the judge that it is, if you're the respondent, that a restraining order is not needed to prevent the occurrence of future domestic violence. Now, what goes into that? Okay, there being no domestic violence in the past, that's going to be a big one. So maybe you have text messages that are friendly throughout the whole day, with the other party on a day that she claims that you were brutally abusing her. Those are going to be important. Those are going to be relevant. What about if the petitioner, since filing the restraining order, has been texting you, telling you that they love you, that they wanna get back together with you and you have not responded? Well, those can be important too because they show that the petitioner likely isn't really afraid of you. What's not necessarily relevant is the petitioner calling you names, bad behavior that doesn't rise to the level of harassment and doesn't rise to the level of violence, but it's just an argument that the two of you had where neither one of you was very nice to each other, or maybe just one side was a little meaner, but if it doesn't rise to that level of abuse, it's probably not going to be important. So first of all, figure out, is it relevant? If it's not relevant, the judge is not going to want to see it and the judge will lose patience even faster. And by the way, the reason why the judge isn't going to look at all of this isn't just because the judge is lazy or impatient, it's because they are loaded with so many of these hearings, they are understaffed. They have maybe 20 hearings in one day, and if the judge attempted to read every single document that had anything to do with a relationship, or even half, then they'll never get to everyone. And so these restraining orders would just be extended more and more and more to the point where maybe you don't get a hearing for years and the TRO is in place the whole time. So it is actually to the benefit of at least respondents for it, cut for the judge to try to move these hearings along. Number two, be prepared to summarize. Okay, so one of the examples that I gave for relevance was text messages that the petitioner sent to you, the respondent, after filing the restraining order. Are you going to read every single text message that the petitioner sent to you as the respondent to the judge? No. What you need to do is be prepared to summarize them and say, Your Honor, the petitioner has been texting me since filing this restraining order. I brought here with me today true and correct copies of all of the text messages that she sent me in which she says things such as, I love you. I want to get back together with you. I want to drop this whole thing. 
I never responded to her, as you'll see in the text messages. And I've marked this group of text messages as Respondents Exhibit 1. So you've grouped them all together, and now the judge knows when she wants to look at Respondents Exhibit 1, what she'll probably do is just look at a few of them and see, okay, all of these are gray bubbles, not blue bubbles. These are all things that were sent by the petitioner to the respondent without receiving a response, and you kind of glance at them to get a sampling of what they say. And you're kind of giving a sampling too. That makes it easy for the judge when you group them all together when you group them all together, when you categorize them. Another example that I gave were text messages that occurred on a day in which the petitioner said that you were abusive to her. So you would want to say, Your Honor, petitioner has said that on April 7th, 2023, that I was abusive to her. She says that it happened around lunchtime. I brought here with me today true and correct copies of our text messages from that day showing that we were texting all day long. We weren't even in the same place and we were both loving to each other. Now, what would you not want to do? You wouldn't want to just take all those text messages from April 7, 2023, all the way to the present, and it's September 2023 when I'm making this video, just all of the text messages and give them to the judge as a group and say, here, Your Honor, you look through them in this limited amount of time that you have because chances are that they won't and they're just going to decide in favor of one person or the other without looking at all of it because they literally don't have time. And special note if you have an attorney. I've been doing this for 11 years now. I have done a lot of restraining order hearings. I've done trials all the way up to first degree murder. And it can still be difficult to convince clients not to use this kitchen sink approach because they have so much anxiety and they are in the weeds. They are in the situation and they are surrounded by all of these documents, all of these feelings, all of these thoughts about why the situation is unjust and why they need to get out of it. And it's difficult for them to gain perspective and really look at, okay, What's important in these documents? What does this show? We're not going to just read the story of your whole relationship, you know, through 500 printed page of text messages. And some people are prolific texters. The judge won't do that. What I've started doing that has been helpful, and I encourage you to have a conversation with your attorney about this if you have a restraining order hearing, is I talk to the client about the documents first. What kind of documents do you have? Okay, here's what they are alleging. What kind of proof do we have that we can show that this isn't true? And I'll ask them some key questions. And then I ask them to provide those documents, which now the client and I, through our discussion, have already categorized. So we know why they're relevant. We know why they're important. If the client's trying to give me documents that are pictures of, you know, the petitioner and respondent together that were on social media, and I don't think that those are relevant, I'll just tell the client there. So they're not wasting their time uploading them. I'm not looking at them wondering, what does this have to do with anything later on? We've had this discussion. And now we've already sort of summarized them before we even began. So it becomes much easier for the client and I to sort of curate exactly what's important and make sure that the client's evidence is presented in the strongest possible light. Now you can definitely do that for yourself, but what it takes is really zooming out and trying to gain some perspective here and trying to figure out what am I trying to prove? Okay, I have a piece of paper here. What is this really supposed to show the judge? Is it just me saying, hey, I bought you flowers for Valentine's Day at a domestic violence restraining order hearing? Unless something is alleged to have happened on Valentine's Day, and even if it is, like, that really has to do with the flowers or the timing of the text message or something, if it's just to show that I'm a good guy, then this one needs to be tossed out. I don't need to waste the judge's time with that. I hope you found this video helpful. Again, if you are planning to represent yourself in a restraining order hearing, I highly encourage you to at least take the first free class. Go to defeatthedvro.com or you can go and check out the link in the description box below. And if you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell.